Hi John, I just wanted to record this quick video for you. It might not be that quick, I just wanted to discuss a few concerns that I have with the house uh, to help you understand the estimate and uh, what the scope of the work is going to be. So, first of all, I want to discuss, you have the stamped concrete driveway. So these are considered decorative. Um, I noticed there are some cracks currently in the driveway, however, we're going to avoid exacerbating that problem. Uh, how we're going to avoid that is one, for the sake of delivery, we will probably be using this area right here instead of the usual conveyor belt that you see loading uh, shingles on a roof it will be a uh, boom truck so like a kind of like a crane um, but that'll reach up that'll get the roof loaded so that there won't be a big heavy uh, truck on this stamped concrete uh, it'll just uh, save a lot of the damages okay another thing that some guys might not catch is you have extended uh, an extended overhang here. Now you currently have this lighting in here, right? Um, this is considered additional intake ventilation, right? So more air is coming into your roof than getting out of your roof, and that's the reason for the uh, for the added deterioration of the T-lock roof, right? Um, your neighbor's having the same problem actually, uh, but the point is, is that there's not adequate out. Uh, out ventilation lots in not enough out also this represents a nice damming risk because as snow comes off that roof uh, you're gonna have the potential for an ice dam uh, increase because you have more cold air coming in so that snow and ice will melt and then it'll stop above here and freeze right and could cause problems now being that once we're done we will have ripped off I haven't done them done the calculations yet but I'm gonna guess it's a little over 100 bundles just by looking at it. Uh, over 100 bundles were the shingles, 22 shingles in a bundle, and uh, so, you know four to six nails per shingle. You're looking at 100, 2200 times well, 8800 nails that could be potentially coming out of your roof. That's 8800 holes uh, that we got to watertight, and that is a critical area. I'm gonna go up on here on the roof. It's pretty steep, so uh, just bear with me, and it's. Uh, yeah, so I was gonna get up there for you. Uh, oh, also one thing. Currently, there is no drip edge installed, so you have just a layer of poly that'll go about three feet up. Uh, they used a different shingle for starter, and then uh, this. Lots of delamination, obviously occurring. I'm sure you've noticed that. Uh, gutters are in good shape. Uh, there's some spots where they're not draining properly. Uh, but otherwise, they're okay. Um, going back up on the roof. Okay, so another thing that I'm concerned about is this. And this is what we call, well, it's not quite a dead valley, but as you can see, water comes all the way from this slope, and this slope, and this slope comes down here, and you're getting a fair amount of shingle wear in here. And this is about where that overhang is. So you're gonna get some freezing here. So this will be completely covered in ice and water barrier. This is gonna prevent any issues. Also, I'd highly suggest putting a metal valley in, which I'll build into the quote. Okay, so now we're coming up to the top. You should have at least one turbo up here. I wouldn't do ridge vent because it's too steep. Right? Um, luckily, you have more ventilation than your neighbors do, uh, so you're getting slightly longer life out of it, but you're still in some areas that are pretty critical. All right, so I like that there's a sat saddle built back here. We'll be uh, reusing that. Now, the step flash is put in by the stucco, so we're gonna reuse that because we don't wanna cut the stucco if we don't have to. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. No major issues. You're getting some cracking up here and up here. Nothing too, too major. No major rust spots up here. So that's not, you're not pooling any water and all this caulking I checked is in good condition. So I don't see any reason to cut the stucco. Coming down here. Now note a couple things here. So whoever installed this penetration did it more or less right. Notice how you got coverage about two thirds down. That's the proper way. Um, these T-locks are hard to deal with, so 
I'll give him a pass on the fact that it's square, but it should be a round cut. But then, if you look at this, where half of it is all the way, the other half is half the way, that's one third of the way. And then, coming over here, these are about a third. So, whoever installed this roof obviously had subcontractors. The reason I assume that is because with us, we have uh, people that we hire and train. It's just our people on the roof. So, I mean, you always have the owner on the roof. You always have, well, uh, you always have a foreman on the roof and you always, sometimes one of them might not be there, but you always have an owner or a foreman. And then uh, all our people are people we've hired and trained and they, they follow our process, do it our way every time. This shows that there's no process. So some guys believe it's okay to go a third. Some people believe in doing it the way the manufacturer of the product says, which is two thirds, but it all comes down to a difference in opinion. So that is a small concern with a roof like this. Also, you'll note you're getting a fair amount of granule buildup in your gutters. So we're gonna clean that out. Uh, also, I have a vague suspicion that you're actually losing water off these gutters and they're not actually draining any water and that's why the granule buildup has occurred because this was would more or less wash out a little bit but I mean you're having plants grow in here let me show you all right so if you look at that right look at how the water is gonna come it's just gonna come straight off and shoot over the edge so it might be worthwhile considering a, uh, a five inch gutter system at some point I mean we'll we'll back off the overhang a bit uh, and then obviously you'll have drip edge, but that's one small concern. Okay, where were we? Oh yes, this spot. Forgive me, it's a little hard to hold the camera to do this. Okay, so note this water steam. Ah, oh. Leaf flew my face. <laughs> I thought it was a bug. Um, that there is water staining. I'm not sure why water's getting in behind here. I, I know it has something to do with this, but I haven't found the exact area, but that is something we definitely need to address while we're up here. You'll note that that nail is driven in at an angle. That's because this space right here is too small to fit an air gun in properly. And so what's gonna happen is people are gonna glue in shingles, which is probably what you had here. Um, we have a palm nailer. Most roofers don't know what that is. Um, it's just a little, it's exactly like it sounds, it's a little nailer that just goes in the palm of your hand. You and it puts the nail in, uh, but it allows you to get in tight spots like this so you don't have to do the glue-in special. So that's one thing to can be concerned about. Um, and then, yes, it looks like there might have been some problems over here. I don't know if you're the original owner of the house, but uh, there's obviously been some concerns here. And that's exacerbated by the fact that again, we have about half coverage there and less than a third coverage there. And we have roofing cement here. So that's, so whatever is there could also be happening over here. And that's the reason for the water staining. You're starting to get some exposed nail heads just from age and time. I like that they have a saddle here so that it's not a dead valley but that's going to take an expert to redo. So only 10 year shinglers will be installing in this area, in that area, and in that area. Otherwise, most of this is pretty run of the mill for our people, but a couple spots where you're going to need, where you're going to need a pro. Okay, so that concludes. Wait a minute, there's something around the back. Oh, right, you have the same overhang in the back. We're gonna tarp the entire property. So basically everything that you see around this is gonna get tarped. I know you have an air conditioner down here. Um, no, sorry, over here. And your neighbor has one. We're gonna clean your neighbor's yard and your yard so that uh, hopefully we can do their roof because they need it just as bad. But we're gonna protect the air conditioners, not with tarps. Tarps uh, can get sucked in. Odds are the AC is not going to kick in at this time of year, but 
we do uh, we do uh, use a uh, board instead of a tarp so that it doesn't get any nails or anything in there um, also while we're here we're gonna magnet rake the entire property so you're not gonna get any nails I see you're doing some landscaping we want to make sure that uh, we don't disturb that so we're gonna tarp everything up but thanks for watching sorry I missed you I hope uh, I hope this helps answer your questions about your roof thank you